presentation. This is Search Engine Optimization in Everyday English, presented by me, Matt Mansfield. And well, let's do a couple of quick housekeeping things before we get started. Um, first off, there has been a severe weather alert for my area, so if you lose communication with me, then um, that's probably what happens, and I'll get in touch with all of you and make sure that uh, we reschedule a webinar if for some reason I lose connectivity. Um, you could always ask questions. If you look over in your sidebar, you'll notice that there's a spot to ask questions. Uh, please do. I'll try to answer at the end. And um, at some points, I might ask you to raise your hand. Uh, sometimes I'll ask a question or see if uh, there's something that uh, you guys might know or ask a poll real quickly. And raising your hand is a good way to do that. Um, and you could do that with the button here on the right. So before we get started, I'm going to jump back out real fast. Is there any questions from anybody in the uh, audience before we get started? Everybody able to hear me okay? And hopefully uh, everything's all right. And um, if so, then I'm going to get started. Great. Okay. So let me jump back into our slide presentation. So today we're going to talk about SEO. And we're going to take a look at SEO using a recipe approach. We're going to start off with the basic ingredients. We're going to add a dash of the secret sauce, which is some of the fun and exciting things that uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, sort of behind SEO. We're going to sprinkle with some tips and uh, give you some great um, actionable steps that you can take to make your SEO work better, your search engine optimization. We're going to have a quick after dinner show and then a dessert and then we're going to hold our bellies because we're going to be stuffed full of information and do some Q&A. So let's get started with the first part of the webinar, our base ingredients. So what is SEO? Basically SEO, search engine optimization, is setting up your site so it shows up as high as possible in your natural search results. So if we look at Google here, You'll see, and most of you know this, but I just want to review it for everyone. There is ads and sponsored search results on the sides and the top. And the natural search happens in the middle here. And really what you want, the best thing that can happen is that you are number one on the search results in um, the search engines that you're targeting. So that you're either number one or at least you're on the first page. So that's the goal of SEO. And I just wanted to show you guys this page. Um, this is an example page for my site, and this is going to be the page that we're talking about as we go through the webinar tonight. So best accounting software for small business, and I'm going to show you how I optimize this page for SEO so that people can find it. So how do you set up your site for SEO? So we're going to talk at a high level here because we're talking about the basics still. We're not going to get deep into the details. But you set up your site with SEO by setting the SEO parts of the page. And to do that, there's what you call metadata. Metadata literally means data about your data. So really what you're doing is you're putting a few things on your pages to tell the search engines what your page is all about. The first one is keywords. And we're going to talk a lot about keywords a little bit later. But the keywords are really for the search engines. They tell what the page is about. So in this article, best accounting software, small business, software for small business accounting, and you'll notice here a keyword doesn't have to be singular. It could be a keyword phrase. And I'll show you how we choose those and how you find the best keywords and keyword phrases um, a little bit later in the presentation. So these are the keywords that I chose for that article. The second thing you do is by putting in a description. So now the description is for humans. This is a text that when you get a search engine result, so here's my article or my page in a search engine, you'll see here that it has a description. I provided this description on my page so that that's what's shown when the search engines um, crawl my site and decide to show it to somebody in a search result. You also set up your title. So this is the third piece of metadata. Your title does two things. It shows up at the top of your browser. So as you're browsing through, if you were on that page, you would see best accounting software for small business, mad about business. And it also feeds what shows up as the link 
over on the search results page. So best accounting software for small business, mad about business. So all of these metadata, all of these data about your pages are showing up on the search result pages. They're actually used by the search engines, not just to classify you, but also to display the results when you come up in a search. That gives you a lot of power to play with it. There's also some other parts of the page that you set up, the page heading and the page text. And we're going to talk about that and sprinkle with tips a little bit later, because that's actually a bit more about how you construct your page when you want to make it optimal for search engines to find it. So I'm going to jump out, see if there's any questions or problems at this point. OK, great. So I'm going to jump back in, and we're going to take a look at the dash of secret sauce. And this is really the key part of this webinar. SEO can be hard to understand. There's lots of information and lots of opinions, and not everybody disagrees. Or actually, not everybody agrees. There's lots of disagreement. And I found this, actually, this came in an email to me from meetup.com. You know, I get an email every Monday, or in this case, it was Tuesday. And they tell me what meetups or what meetings or networking opportunities I have near me here in Deerfield. And here's two, right, one right after the other. Why eBiz owners need to start optimizing for Bing, which is a search engine, and why optimizing for Bing is no longer an option. I found it very ironic, obviously, that those two followed each other. And I think that it really shows the confusion that a lot of people have around search engines and why it could be very confusing for people when they're trying to figure SEO out. A lot of folks are going to tell you that they can beat the system. Those are our black hats. You see our friend here, Mr. Black Hat SEO. Don't believe them. You know, they can beat the system for a little while, but they're going to cost you a lot of money. They're going to get a few results unless you keep paying a lot of money. And there's a really good chance that you're going to be banned from search engines. And the last thing is these guys are not smarter than the search engine engineers. Why do I know that? Well, Search engine engineers are rocket scientists. I think they're like the smartest people on the planet, except for the folks who work at NASA. They design search engine algorithms. These are the formulas that search engines figure out to, figure, to sort of rank your page to decide where it shows up in the search engine results. This billboard is an example of how Google hires its search engine engineers. If you could figure out the first 10 digit prime found in consecutive digits of e.com, go to that site, and this happened a few years ago, and actually you could apply as a job as a search engineer over at Google. So this is an example of the type of person they're looking for and the mindset they're looking for when they actually create search engine algorithms. A number of other things. Search engines, the way they determine your rank or where you show up in the search engine results are very complex. There are on-page factors like the metadata that we discussed. So in other words, your keywords and your description and your title. There's also a ton of what they call off-page factors. And off-page factors are really interesting. And nobody knows all of them except, of course, the diff people at the search engines. They try to keep these as secret as possible. But one of the interesting ones is clickback speed. So if you do a search and click on a site and go to that site and then hit your back button very quickly, well, the search engine notices that and they downgrade that site that you went to because obviously there wasn't anything very interesting there for you and that could affect you. And there are tons of factors that they're using. Plus, the algorithms are always being refined. They're always changing. So how do you keep up with it all? The key is you don't. There's really no way to keep up with the search engine engineers. They are working day and night to make their search engine more and more like a human being. So they are always making changes and I'll get into that a little bit in a second. But there's no way that you can, especially since you don't work there, um, you might, but <laughs> um, if you don't, there's no way you can know everything they're thinking. And trying to figure out exactly how to beat the system is just a losing game. It's like going to Vegas and trying to win. Um, 
So you use a solid proven approach. It's totally white hat and it works no matter what changes in the algorithms. I'm actually going to jump out real fast. Okay, great. Okay, what is this approach? Well, here's an interesting fact that a lot of people don't think about. Search engines want people to like your content. They want people to like your site. And the reason is search engines want to serve up good search results because when they do, people come back and use their search engine. And the more people that come back and use their search engine, the better the chance that someone's going to click on one of their ads or those sponsored search links. That was with those links that surrounded the natural search results. And that's how search engines actually make money. So they want you to have good content. They want people to like you so that pe you know, when they serve you up as a search result, people are happy. So they're actually on your side. And that's why the algorithm is so complex. That's why the mathematics and the formulas that they use are so detailed because they're trying to make their search engines, all the different engineers, the folks at Yahoo, the folks at Bing, the folks at Google, they want their search engine to be as much like a human being as possible. Because if their search engine is as much like a human as possible, then people are good. it will know what people like, the kind of content that people like, and they will be able to pick and rank it the right way so that people are happy with their search results on those search engines. So, what does this mean? You need to create your content and your sites for human beings because that's what the search engines are trying to get to. So how does the search engine see your site? Well, a search engine sees your site at three levels and is really not much deeper that they go. They will find all the pages on your site, but when they're looking for different factors in your site, three levels is considered the standard of, of how deep a search engine will go. And what a level means is if I'm on a home page, there's a link to a topic page. And then when I'm on a topic page, there's a link down to a content page. So if you think about this, this could be my home page. This might be my page on my site, Websites and Blogs, which talks about websites and blogs. And then it has a bunch of links to different articles, you know, posts about websites and blogs. So each one of these is how a search engine sees your site. Now, keywords. Keywords are the key to the solid proven approach. And I'm sorry for the pun, I couldn't resist. What you want are juicy keywords. You want keywords that are high in demand. A lot of people are searching for them every month, but low in supply. They're not used on a lot of other sites. I use Word Tracker, and this is a great tool. It costs money, it's not free, um, but I have not been able to find any other tool that provides me the information like Word Tracker does. So, for example, for our accounting software, article, my post before, that I wanted to find good keywords for, I went and I searched at Word Tracker for accounting software small business. I'm just kind of guessing, you know, what would people be searching for? Well, I got back a lot of keywords. This is just the first maybe 10 of them. I've got back almost a thousand keywords. These are actual searches that people did on search engines, um, Google in particular for this one, that say here is um, what people are looking for and here is um, some data about it. So here's the keyword and again the keywords in a lot of cases are phrases. Most people don't search for just one word. They usually use a phrase when they search. It'll tell me the searches. That's my demand. How many searches did this phrase, this keyword phrase get within one month? It'll also tell me my competition which means out of all the sites on the internet, how many other ones are using this keyword exactly like that, this keyword phrase? And then they have two different calculations. And honestly, I don't know exactly what the calculations are. One's a division of the other, and then one is a little bit more complex. They go into it. But what this tells you is what they call the profitability, and I put quotes around that, of a keyword. 
So I typically sort by this KEI3 because it's been a very good indicator for me. The higher the KEI3 number is, the juicier a keyword is for you to use. So I look for keywords that are, target my audience, are at the right amount of level for demand and supply. So the one I chose as the primary keyword for that article was best accounting software small business. My target market is small business and the article was about the best accounting software. So it was perfect for me. 1900 people search for that key term a month. Only 21 other sites are using it. Sometimes I look at these numbers and I can't believe that not more people are. But that's what is told. So I chose that as my primary keyword. I also chose four others, and I'll get to why you want to choose five keywords in a bit. And I put them in. So what do you want for supply and demand for your different levels on your site? So, whoops, let me go back for a sec, sorry. Ah, I'm going next. Okay. For your home page, and this is something that's really hard to understand the first time you hear it, so um, try to listen and don't get angry. <laughs> you want your demand on your home page to be as high as it can be. You want the supply to be as low as possible, but it doesn't really matter. Because this is going to be the most competitive page you're going to go for. Typically, you don't win for your home page on the search engines. You, if you can get your home page on the front page, of the search engines, that's amazing. Um, you either have an amazing niche, you're writing incredible content, getting tremendous traffic, have excellent track back links and all that kind of stuff. But it's usually very hard. The key to the keywords that you use on your homepage is just to tell the search engine what the site is about. And typically, because most of us are all in the same businesses, you know, some of us are accountants, and some of us are consultants, and some of us do different things. Um, but, you know, we're not the only ones out there who do it. These keywords are very competitive. So you just want to tell the search engine what your site is about. So when he comes and he crawls downward, the first thing he knows right there is this is what the site is all about. Your level two pages, you actually can win. You can show up on the first page of the search results. But it takes a little bit of time. The demand for this typically between 1,000 and 9,999 searches. It could be higher, of course. Um, if you find a word that you know has 60,000 searches and only a supply of one, well, that's a great keyword. You should definitely use it. But typically, anything that's over 9,999 searches a month enters into the very competitive range. And so, you know, statistically, this is a, a good range for level two type pages. You can win these again, but they do take time. But level three is really the interesting stuff. Level three is like your blog post pages, you know, where you have most of your articles. And the accounting article that we, I showed you before, which I'm using as my example, is actually the article that is at level three. So you want between 100 to 999 searches. Of course, you could definitely have higher, and as you remember, I did have a higher number, I had 1900, but this is the easiest to win. You will show up on search engines on the first page for your level three pages faster and quicker and higher than, and, than the other two types of keywords because there isn't a lot of competition for them. Finding these juicy keywords is really valuable for you because people will find you and they will find you. It doesn't really matter how they come to your site. You don't care if they come in on your home page or on your level two pages. If they come in on your level three pages because they're looking for a specific piece of information, like accounting software, then that's great. Because once they're on your site and they realize that you have interest and good information, they'll check out your level two and level one pages and they'll get over to your services and your products and your offerings. And that's really the secret to this whole approach. When you look at the traffic from search engines that you get from here, most people enter your site at level three. Some of them will enter at level two, and very few will ever enter at level one. 
Level one is where you send people or you maybe you send people from social media or you might want to send people there from, you know, direct or from your card or however people get to you, you know, people who you deal with. But when you're talking about search engines, you want people to get to the information right away that they want right at that moment. And so your level three pages are the pages most appropriate for that. They're also the ones you're using the most easily won keywords on. So what's the conclusion on this? Well, content plus keywords equals traffic. And not just traffic, but targeted traffic. You need a lot of those level three pages. If you have a blog, that's the perfect model for it. Um, and you need those level three pages to have juicy keywords. And that is the cornerstone, really, of this approach. So I'm going to kind of come out. Okay, Matt, I'll answer your question in a moment. Um, hopefully, so at least everybody can hear, so that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to Sprinkle with Tips. Okay, so Sprinkle with Tips. So keyword tips. When you're setting up your pages, you really only want to use five keywords per page. The reason is because after five keywords, most search engines don't really care. And actually, they put most of their weight on the primary keyword. So the first keyword in that range is the one that you want to use. What's interesting is, if you ever have used Google's um, Webmaster Tools, they'll actually show you repeating keywords. So they'll say this meta keyword, you know, the keyword on this page is a duplicate of another one. The only one they're looking at is the first one. So you could use the same keywords on different pages, but you have to use the first one on only one of your pages or else Google is going to down check you for it. So your primary keyword has to be keyword has to be unique across your site on a page. Your keywords have to be relevant and juicy. So unless people really know you or your company, they're not going to search for you. So that's not a good keyword. You know, if people are not going out there to, and saying Matt Mansfield, you know, a lot of people do search for Matt Mansfield, but there's a heck of a lot of Matt Mansfields in this world. So most of them aren't relevant to me. Um, it's not a good keyword for me to use because I'm not going to get the targeted traffic that I want. Same thing for town or city names. Now sometimes town or city names are good and they're good when they're used in conjunction with things like accounting New York or web design Chicago. You know that's better because at least there you're sort of saying what you do and where you do it. But just putting in, and I've seen this time and time again, your company name and then Chicago just will not get you any traffic at all. Chicago is an extremely competitive keyword. Um, there's no way you'll ever show up on the top 10 pages for that. And um, nobody's searching for your company name, or if they are, it's extremely rare. And Google's going to find your company name by looking at the text on your site. So if people search for it, they'll find you anyway. You don't have to worry about putting it in a keyword. Optimizing your pages. You want to use your primary keyword as well as you can in your page metadata. So your descriptions and your title. So if you look back at my title, I have best accounting software for small business. That was the title on my page. My description also had best accounting software for small business. The keyword phrase was best accounting software small business. So I fit it in as well as I can. Remember, you want to write for human beings. If I wrote best accounting software small business, it just wouldn't sound right. So I don't write that way. But Google actually will say, OK, best accounting software, small business. He'll ignore the four if somebody searches for it. This is a match. So you're actually doing pretty well. What's nice is if I use best accounting software, small business, I also get matched for best accounting software. I also get accounting software small for small business. So that's called the long tail. In other words, these phrases are things that Google can find you using a bunch of different combinations. So it actually really helps uh, if you use keyword phrases. You also want to use your primary keyword, if you can, in the first H tag, the first heading tag on your page. And that's typically your title. So this is the title of my page. And again, my primary keyword is in the title of that page. You also want to use it throughout the text. 
It's best if your primary keyword could be used in the first and last paragraph. Don't ask me why. Search engines like it. Um, is I learned it a little while ago and I have found it to be true. Um, you also want to use the other four keywords. Remember, you did have five keywords. You want to sprinkle it throughout the article. You don't want to keyword stuff, though. That's very 1990s. You want to write for humans. And um, as long as you're using your primary keyword and a few of the other keywords a few times, you're going to be fine. Google is very good at looking at the text and the contextual text and understanding from the keywords and your text, and the other search engines are getting better at it too, what your article is about and if it actually matches the keywords, your content. Um, if it doesn't, obviously, they'll downgrade you. But if it does, then they really like that because that means that you're being honest and you're telling them the right information. Another important thing is that page you really want to set this and don't look back. Page rankings change all the time. In a little while, I'm going to show you some examples of results that I've gotten. And what's important to understand is that if I did the same search within three months, I might not be on the first page. I might be on the fifth page. I might be even higher on the first page. Lots of different things happen. And again, this gets back to the, you know, the whole um, factor of um, you know rankings and algorithms. But you know, sometimes Google likes newer stuff. Most search engines do. They like things that are fresh. So if you're writing articles, um, they're gonna probably over time they figure that it's you know not as relevant. Um, also, other people are writing articles and they may supplant you. They may come in on top of you or beat you in the SEO game and that's going to knock you down in rankings. So you don't have, don't worry about that though. Really the key is to just keep creating content. Keep making those um, level three pages. Keep using those juicy keywords and that targeted search traffic is going to come. Okay. Just jumping out. I want to take a look at Matt's question here. So where do they get their data and how do they know they're accurate? That's a really good question, Matt. Um, is where Word Tracker gets the data and how do I know it's accurate? Well, I you know, it's interesting. I've used a lot of search engine tools. I have um, gone through Google's tool, I've used free tools, I, I also I think you guys can see down here, uh, Market Samurai is a tool I use, which is another search engine tool. Um, and every single one of them gives me different numbers, all of them. So uh, it's sort of a, a little bit of a crapshoot. Um, I know that Word Tracker works because it works, which is really the, the best answer I can give you is that through, you know, over experience and, and time when I've used the tool, um, it has proven itself again and again. The other thing I really like about Word Tracker, and the reason that I go back to it again and again, is because it really is the clearest presentation of the data that I'm looking for. The demand, the supply, and the, you know, the calculations that they use to tell me if a keyword is juicy or not. And because of that, um, I really like uh, word tracker and I'll go back to it. I got Marcus Samurai to kind of do a little bit of checking. Um, they also do and have a couple of pieces of functionality in there that I like as well. But I think the real key was just um, word tracker worked. And you know honestly you might find another tool that works really well for you. The key is to have a tool that gives you information you could utilize because if the information is not valuable to you or understandable in any way then it's not going to be providing value and you're not going to be able to do your SEO type stuff. Okay, so let me jump back into the after dinner show. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, Nicole. Blog posts consider level two or three. That's a good question. I'm sorry I'm jumping in with some questions here, but this is a good spot in the presentation to do it. Um, are they considered level two or three in the eye of search engines? Um, it really depends on the, the way your site is organized, but typically uh, they're considered uh, level three. Uh, let me see if I can open this up. If I jump over to my Mad About Business site, 
um, you'll see that the way that I've constructed my site is very purposeful, you know, to the one, two, three level. So I've got my home page, which is one. I have my second level pages, which are sort of index pages that have links to a lot of my different articles. But most blogs also have archive pages and they also have blog pages, uh, category pages. So these category pages serve as, so if I go to let's say marketing and social media posts, this is a category page just like on any other blog and what this does is tell me that uh, this is a, a level two page because it comes off of the home page and then all of my posts under here are level three. So on a blog your posts are very good level three pages is the answer to that question. A long answer, sorry. Okay, anything else right now? Okay, let me go on and then uh, we could take some more questions in a few minutes. Okay, the after dinner show. So the after dinner show, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a show of my results, what I've been doing with uh, SEO and how it's been working with me using the approach that I outlined with the juicy keywords couple of tips and then just sort of setting it and leaving it alone and that is exactly what I do literally I only look for keywords when I write a post and once I write that post and set those keywords I forget about it I never go back so when I launched I was starting from scratch I launched October 2010 with Mad About Business I had had other sites before that but this was my primary site my new one and new domain and all that Using my approach, I've seen a steady growth in the number of visits from search engines. So this is the week-to-week -week growth in search engines between that October 1st to last week, which was the last full week. Um, I get about a thousand visits, uh, a little bit more a month, uh, unique, and I'm happy with that because the thousand is targeted traffic. I actually would much rather have a lower number of traffic than a higher number as long as it's targeted and converting, which uh, in my case is working very well. So what I'm seeing here is that 10% of my traffic as of now is coming from search engines and I'm actually getting some really nice results on the search engine search pages. And this is just gonna keep going up and up on this trend. I love this graph because it just shows you the value. So it really works, this approach, even with competitive niches. And sometimes you have to get creative, which is okay. But um, yeah, I remember a client I had who was a, a life coach. Life coach happens to be one of the most competitive keywords online for anything ever. <laughs> so we looked at you know what could be related to life coach and uh, we settled on goals. And actually goals, setting goals, doing goals, we came up with a ton of juicy keywords that people were searching for and got a ton of traffic to a site based on that. And even one of them was life coach fees. So life coaching fees was one that a lot of people searched for. So he wrote an article about how people set life coach fees and what they typically are. Ton of traffic to his site. So that's a creative use of these juicy keywords. So here's one. If you search for what is a Twitter chat, um, I showed up number eight on page one here on Google for my the guide to Twitter chat edition which is something I wrote back in January um, this keyword that I use the primary keyword is not what is a Twitter Twitter chat it's a different keyword but it's searched for 4,400 times a month and it's not used on any other site the keyword that I'm using for this page which is great for me because it's, that's to me the ultimate juicy 4,400 people looking for it no one's using it. Now, is that accurate? Back to Matt's question. Maybe not, but you know what? This this uh, post drives me a ton of traffic. Run your business online. 262 million results. Why run your business online? One of my uh, key pages I actually just put out there very recently when I redesigned my site about uh, three weeks ago. And again, on page one in position number five this term is searched for that I'm using my primary keyword 33,100 times a month and is only used on 10 other sites again I get a lot of traffic from this 
how to bring a product to launch online. Now, how did I find these keywords, by the way? I use Google Analytics, and this is what people actually searched for, which brought them to my site. These were not the keywords that I used. These are actual searches people ran that brought them to my site. So there's 133 million people um, or results that Google serves up. Out of that, I'm on page one at number two. And the primary keyword for this page is searched for 2,400 times and is only used on 77 other sites. Now that's a little higher demand, but still a very respectable ratio here. And the fact that I'm coming up second, you know, makes me pretty happy. You know, online product launch, the, the fact that you see here is how to bring a product to launch online. You'll notice that the highlighted part here is online product launch. So Google took online product launch and returned me as a result because that's my keyword on that page. And the last one, out of 102,000 people, find a manufacturer for your product. This is actually an article I wrote back in November, still showing up on um, the first page. And my primary keyword for this one is search for 1,900 times and is only used on 40 other sites. So I've been getting actually a lot of traffic from this one lately, which makes me think that if you're a manufacturer, maybe uh, things are looking up because people are looking for you. Okay, so let's see if we have any other questions. Not right now, which is fine. So let's finish up with dessert. What's dessert? Dessert are my small business SEO package. I apologize, but I have one minute of pitch here. Um, they're very fast, very targeted. Uh, I can get you some great keywords, juicy ones, and have them on the right pages and have your site submitted to all of the major, the major three search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing. The ultimate goal, again, is not just traffic. You really just want traffic. You want targeted traffic. And my clients get results. They're really happy. And so am I with it. And I know you will, too. Um, if you visit my site, madaboutbusiness.com, click on the products and services I'll actually let me see if I'll, I'll jump out there real fast okay, come on and bum, bum, bum. Oh, I love it when I have too much running over here okay jump up to products and services go down to the small business SEO packages and you can learn all about what I provide. Down at the bottom are the packages. And if you enter a coupon for the next two weeks, you guys only, only the folks at the webinar, the coupon is SEO webinar, you will save $200 off of any of the packages. And that coupon expires on Monday, June 13th. So again, this is only for you guys and only now. Um, for the next two weeks okay and that is what I have for you today the uh, hold our bellies I hope you're not too full of information it's a lot to take in this is really a different approach than a lot of people talk about um, you know when you really get into SEO a ton of people talk about you know backlinks and all that and you can do all that and and they're valuable too however there's a lot of um, scams out there a lot of things that can get you web traffic I have found that for the time investment and for the actual um, you know effectiveness of getting targeted traffic this has been the uh, best approach for me okay someone has their hands up is there a problem let me see look like somebody put their hand up nope okay so that's it for tonight um, I'm gonna I've recorded this webinar I will have it online so I'll send you an email tomorrow and tell you where you can go and watch it and again that's sort of a private spot for you guys since you signed up for the webinar um, do you guys have any other questions? This is your chance to pick my brain. I'm here. It's free. It doesn't have to be related exactly to what we talked about. Um, if it's just a question about um, the site, then that would be fine. 
Yes, I use keywords on every single blog post, Nicole. I think um, it's really valuable to do that. I think that it's important to get the keywords out and um, and make sure that you're positioning your blog post uh, correctly. I want each, you know, it takes a while to write my blog posts, and I want each one of my blog posts to um, have a uh, an impact on what I'm doing. And if I can get it to uh, show up on a search engine, that blog post is going to send traffic to my site. So using, you know, I use WordPress and um, I use the Genesis theme and at the bottom I'm able to put in a title, a description, and my keywords. I do that for every single one. I also do it for as many pages as I can, um, especially my landing pages and pages that I sell from because again, I do want people to wind up on those. Um, updating SEO. Again, that's a good question, how often you do that. I don't really update my SEO often at all. In fact, I, I really don't believe in it because it, it's kind of, a again, a, a big game. You know, you could sit there and say, okay, is this keyword better? Is this keyword uh, going to get me more traffic? You know, have the keywords changed? I mean, I certainly think that for some of your high-performing uh, pages, you don't want to touch anything because Google knows you. Every time you change something, it takes a while for the search engines to crawl your site and pick up those changes, and you really don't want to mess with too much of that. Um, I think the key to um, you know times are if you want to look at some of your lower performing pages. If you wrote a blog post, which is great, and you think that it shows off your information, or you have a page that really tells people some great stuff and you're not getting the traffic to that page that you thought you would or it's not showing up on the search engines, that would be a good time to look at the SEO and maybe see if you could find some juicier keywords to use. But that's really the only time that I go back and take a look um, at the SEO. Um, do I know of any success stories using this approach with affiliate marketing? Well, the, the key fun thing, Matt, with affiliate marketing is that it's actually, um, you know, you have to make it content. So if you're going to do it with affiliate marketing, the key would be to write some content about the thing, the product or the service that you're an affiliate of. Um, then it would work because remember, Google's going to look at your page or your content and they're going to say, you know, how good is this content? Is it really telling people something? You, again, I cannot emphasize how smart these algorithms are becoming and um, they I mean which is not to say that there's still not a lot of holes in them because you still get like you know those funky search pages or those like holding pages with lots of links and stuff but I've been seeing it much more rarely lately their algorithms are really getting sharp and as long as you're providing useful content maybe a review of the product or information about the product then I think you are actually getting to um, a point where this approach would work great for an affiliate marketing site because each one of your affiliate products <coughs> could have um, a ton of different articles about it. You could write an article that's a review. You could write an article that's a, um, you know, a success story, somebody who used it. A lot of affiliate programs actually provide content and you could adapt that for use on your site. Each one of those can be a page and each one of those can have the keywords on them. How do keywords work within a store? Not too well. It's a very interesting uh, thing. Stores are a whole, and e-commerce is kind of a whole different animal. What we're talking about, and what I talked about tonight, is more content marketing. In other words, you're getting people to come to you because you're writing useful content. They call that inbound marketing as well. When you have a store, um, you can put keywords on the pages. However, I believe that Google ranks those differently and it also lists them differently. When you go out to Google, you know, you're going to see um, in a Google search result, oops, not Gmail, sorry, in a Google search result, so if I look for, you know, like uh, tennis balls, I don't know, um, you're going to see that there's also shopping. So you have your shopping results and you'll see here that the shopping results are kind of in here. And these are all kind of shopping results, um, mostly probably because there aren't a lot of articles about tennis balls. But there is, um, 
you know, let's if we just search for tennis, let's say, um, as an example, here you'll get a lot of news and information about tennis, but if I wanted to, I can go to shopping. So I think the search engines handle them differently than they do uh, regularly. So you can use the SEO, but it's not going to be uh, showing up in the everything search. It'll most likely show up under shopping or results for shopping and different things uh, like that. Okay, Google AdSense. How is that versus SEO? Well, it really depends. Um, I like Google AdSense, and I think that um, it can provide a lot of value. And for those who haven't spent a lot of time on it, Google AdSense are the fo is the program that lets you put the ads here on the side or at the top. So my search for search um, uh, engine optimization, uh, which I used as an example, these people are actually paying for and bidding for these to show up. The highest bidders show up first. Um, for some very competitive keywords, that could be a lot of money. Um, sometimes it could be a dollar to a dollar fifty, or even two, three dollars for a click. Um, I like search engine or Google AdSense when you're trying to push something. You got a new product out there. You have something that uh, you really want to get in front of people. I happen to be one of the only people I know that really uses the ads a lot. <laughs> Because if I, I figure if these people are paying for it, maybe you know, especially when I'm looking for services, um, then they have something relevant for me to look at. So I kind of like looking at the ads and the sponsored stuff. Um, so I think that it's valuable when you want to push something and get it out there. Um, I don't know. I, I people trust natural search so much better. So when it comes down to SEO, I kind of think. SEO is really to get your targeted traffic over time. AdSense is really to get your traffic for a specific purpose. Hope that answers your question. Uh, Debbie, I see you have your hand up. I'm not sure if you could, do you know how to ask a question? Is that what you're trying to figure out? Um, you could type it in there or you could use the chat. I believe that you can type in the chat. I might have the chat turned off. Um, but if you have a question and you can't get it uh, asked, I'm more than happy to uh, answer you. You can email me at matt at mattaboutbusiness.com, and I'd be happy to answer that question for you. So we're getting close to the end of our session here. Are there any other questions or anything that was unclear to anybody uh, during this webinar? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much for attending today. Um, this is actually a topic that I, I love a lot, and I think that uh, it's kind of fun always sort of laying it out for people um, and using this different approach. I also uh, urge you to go ahead and uh, check out the um, uh, products and services and take a look at that SEO um, packages over on my site. Using that keyword SEO webinar gets you some uh, nice discount, which will only be going on again for the next two weeks. So thanks. Uh, please don't be strangers. Feel free to reach out to me whenever you'd like to. I'm on Twitter. I'm all over the place. Um, you can find me at my different social sites over on my site. Um, I have all of them listed right here. So thank you again for coming tonight, and I hope you all have good luck in your SEO efforts. Thank you.